Good evening and welcome back to the Johnson Space Center in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where at this hour, the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers on console as the minutes tick backward on clocks here in the control room toward the time of the undocking of the Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft that will bring Kevin Ford, Oleg Novitsky, and Yevgeny Tarelkin home after almost five months in space. The trio uh, strapped into their seats in the descent module of the International uh, Space Station's Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft. Uh, they uh, were all suited up uh, several hours ago, strapped into their respective seats. Uh, Novitsky, uh, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked on his left by Yevgeny Tarelkin, the board engineer for tonight's entry and landing. And on uh, Novitsky's right, in the right seat of the descent module, NASA's Kevin Ford, who has served as the Expedition 34 commander. Here in the uh, flight control room, uh, Mike Serafin, the flight director, is on console at this hour, joined uh, by two spacecraft communicators, Kate Rubens, uh, just to Serafin's right, and to her right, Rob Hayhurst, who are talking respectively with the uh, space station crew on board uh, the International Space Station. Once uh, Ford, Tarelkin, and Novitsky undock their Soyuz vehicle from the Poisk module, on the Earth facing, on the space facing side of the Zvezda service module, just 26 minutes from now. That will leave behind the three Expedition 35 crew members and the formal beginning of Expedition 35, led by Canadian Space Agency astronaut Chris Hadfield, the new commander of the International Space Station, uh, seen on your right, joined uh, in the center by Roman Romanenko, and on the left, NASA's Tom Marshburn. They will remain uh, as a three-man crew aboard the station for the next two weeks until they are joined um, by three new crew members who will launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on in the wee hours of March 29th, Baikonur time. That will comprise uh, Pavel Vinogradov in the middle, uh, Alexander Mazurkin on your right, and NASA's Chris Cassidy on your left. About uh, two and a half hours ago, uh, the six crew members uh, gathered uh, together uh, in the small vestibule connecting uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and the Poisk module for one final opportunity to uh, say farewell to one another and uh, to offer their best wishes to the departing crew of Ford, uh, Novitsky, and Torelkin uh, before they entered uh, their Soyuz vehicle to close the hatches and begin the preparations for uh, the undocking that is coming up shortly, leading to a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 10.05 p.m. Central Time tonight. As you can see uh, from this video, again, uh, the Hatches uh, between the two spacecraft were closed at 3.38 p.m. Central Time, 4.38 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the final farewells taking place as uh, the departing crew made their way into their Soyuz vehicle to begin their final preparations. Once the hatches were closed uh, between uh, the two spacecraft, uh, the vestibule, this uh, small passageway uh, between the docking interface between the Soyuz and, and Poisk uh, was depressurized. Leak checks got underway almost immediately. Uh, the crew uh, then uh, received uh, approval from uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov outside Moscow to uh, don their uh, Russian Sokol launch and entry suits. That took about 40 minutes to complete. They then strapped themselves into their respective seats in the descent module, the centermost section of the three-compartment Soyuz vehicle. Uh, they strapped themselves in with Torelkin on the left seat, uh, Novitsky in the center, and Ford on the right. The uh, suits underwent their own uh, brand of leak checks. Uh, they are airtight, as is the uh, vestibule and the docking interface b between the two vehicles. Uh, about uh, 25 minutes ago, the International Space Station maneuvered into the undocking orientation. Uh, the crew reported it was in great shape and ready to begin the journey home for a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan a few hours from now. Once again, this is video that was recorded about two and a half hours ago as uh, the crew members, uh, the departing crew of Novitsky, Torelkin, and Ford said goodbye to the uh, Expedition 35 crew, uh, soon uh, to be a three-man crew on their own for the next two weeks. Commander Chris Hadfield, NASA flight engineer Tom Marshburn, and Russian flight engineer Roman Romanenko.
There were final pictures taken, as you can see. Some final exchanges of words and well wishes uh, from uh, the remaining crew on board of Hatfield, Romanenko, and Marshburn to the departing crew. The uh, crew entering the Soyuz, uh, in fact, enters into what is known as the orbital module, the uppermost compartment of the Soyuz uh, that uh, contains uh, the facilities and uh, some legroom uh, for the uh, crew members to uh, stretch out a bit, as well as uh, the forward docking mechanism that will be powered up uh, just a short time before the undocking here that's coming up in just 22 minutes. Once uh, the crew made its way past the orbital module, they made their way into the centermost section, the descent module, closed the hatch uh, to the upper section, the orbital module, and then began uh, that series of leak checks uh, as part of the preparations uh, for the undocking that is coming up a short time from now. As we watch the replay of the uh, farewells and hatch closure that took place two and a half hours ago, the International Space Station is currently flying 254 statute miles above the Earth, moving uh, just off the uh, eastern coast of Africa in an orbit uh, inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, moving from southwest to northeast. And now you can see the closing of the hatches as Roman Romanenko uh, was assisted by... Uh, His crewmate, uh, Tom Marshburn, in closing the hatch. And as we said, uh, that uh, ensued a series of leak checks and suit checks as they, the departing Soyuz crew climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits and made their way uh, into the uh, descent module to strap themselves into their seats. Over the past two and a half hours, uh, communications checks and systems checks have been conducted. Everything has been found to be in good shape uh, with the Soyuz vehicle in preparation for its return to Earth. The crew, uh, in a very upbeat and jovial mood, often catnapping at times, relaxing and getting ready for the high-speed uh, return to Earth that will result in a touchdown on the steppe of Kazakhstan, about 36 uh, statute miles to the northeast of the remote town of Arkolik at 10.05 p.m. Central Time this evening. Back here in the... Uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room. Flight Director Mike Serafin is uh, polling his team of flight controllers uh, to get a go for undocking. He will uh, tag up uh, a short time from now with his uh, Russian uh, shift flight director counterpart at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, outside of Moscow. Uh, the Russian uh, flight control team, of course, in charge of uh, tonight's uh, undocking and landing activities. The uh, Soyuz uh, will be flying free under the call sign of Kazbek. That's the name chosen by Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky, uh, the name of one of the major mountains of the Caucasus, that mountain range located uh, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Uh, the Soyuz commander always selects a call sign for the launch to docking phase and the undocking to landing phase of a mission in orbit. Just want to let you know that uh, Houston has confirmed that we are in a good config. We are, in, are expecting an on-time undock, and just want to get confirmation that you guys are ready for undocking. Yeah, be with watching the uh, the attitude change. I've uh, been talking to Roman, and everything looks good on our end. Okay, copy that, and uh, be advised at. Uh, 2347, we're going to have about three minutes of that. Is it three minutes of bad calm? Three minutes of ratty calm, intermittent calm, starting at 2347. See that? See that, thanks. Here in the uh, flight control room, 
Spacecraft communicator Rob Hayhurst uh, talking to Station Commander Chris Hadfield, uh, letting him know that everything is in readiness uh, for undocking and confirming that from his end, uh, on the station side of uh, the complex, uh, that everything, in fact, is also in tandem and ready to uh, support undocking just 17 minutes from now. Once uh, the undocking occurs, uh, which will be the product of uh, a, an undocking command sent from the Russian Mission Control Center uh, to the Soyuz, that will initiate the opening of hooks that have held the uh, Soyuz TMA-06M spacecraft uh, firmly uh, in place at the Poisk module since its arrival back on October 25th. With the hooks open at uh, 6.43 p.m. Uh, Central Time, springs at either side of the docking interface will push off against one another to enable uh, physical separation of the two vehicles. We do expect to have television of all of that uh, over Russian ground stations at the time of undocking. Three minutes after physical separation at 6.46 p.m., a separation burn uh, of the Soyuz engines will be initiated, a 15-second burn uh, to uh, increase uh, the opening rate uh, of the Soyuz by about half a meter per second. This will uh, continue uh, to increase uh, with time over the course of the next uh, couple of hours until such time as the Soyuz is 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station and in position for its deorbit burn, a four minute, 44 second firing of its engines, a retrograde maneuver to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second and enable it to begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. That deorbit burn scheduled at 9.13 p.m. Central Time this evening. Yeah, question about steps 3.5 and 3.6. 3.5. Uh, Tom Marshburn aboard the International Space Station uh, talking uh, to uh, Capcom uh, Rob Hayhurst here in Mission Control on some housekeeping duties. Uh, getting back to, to tonight's landing activities, uh, at the time of landing, uh, Ford, Novitsky, and Torelkin will have spent 144 days in space since their launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan last October 23rd. They will have spent 142 days aboard the International Space Station. Ford uh, will have logged 158 days in space on his two flights. That includes 14 days as the pilot of the shuttle Discovery on the STS-128 mission that went to the International Space Station on an assembly and logistics flight in August and September of 2009. Novitsky and Torelkin, of course, uh, wrapping up their first flight into space and 144 days in orbit. In all, this trio will have orbited the Earth 2,304 times since their launch, traveling 60,998,150 statute miles, just shy of 61 million miles traveled in their 144 days in space. Ted. Yes. We are now uh, just 14 minutes away from undocking, just 11 minutes away from the issuance of the undocking command from Mission Control in Houston, uh, rather Mission Control in Karyov, outside of Moscow. Meanwhile, down in Kazakhstan, in stark contrast uh, to the weather conditions 24 hours ago that prevented the landing, uh, delaying uh, the homecoming of Ford, Novitsky, and Torelkin by 24 hours, uh, fog and freezing rain uh, was the culprit last night. But tonight, it's uh, a starry night and a starry Saturday morning. In Kazakhstan, the weather conditions are frigid but ideal for a landing. Uh, only uh, some scattered and broken clouds reported at the landing site, some 36 uh, statute miles to the northeast of Arkalik. Uh, the temperature at landing time is expected to be 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The wind uh, is very light, just uh, some light breezes uh, out of the southeast at about 7 miles an hour. However, a wind chill factor of about 4 degrees Fahrenheit to greet the trio when they're extracted from their Soyuz spacecraft after they land. In the wee hours on Friday, uh, eight out of the 12 helicopters, the Russian MI-8 helicopters, part of the search and recovery forces,